second other drama here, because you would normally be wondering, Neil, uh, with that going on, why are we selling off here? Well, the big news today was uh, General Michael Flynn uh, pleading guilty to lying to the FBI. But further, an ABC report that says he plans to testify against the President of the United States. And further after that, a report also from ABC, not confirmed anywhere else. So I, I hasten to add this is not confirmed anywhere else. Uh, that uh, then candidate Donald Trump urged his foreign policy advisor, General Flynn, at the time to talk to the Russians. That would be a no no, whether it's a constitutional no no or down the road an impeachable offense on the part of the uh, now President of the United States, anyone's guess. I'm not a lawyer, but fortunately, my buddy Greg Jarrett is, and a darn good one. Um, Greg, good to have you. Nice to be here, Neil. On this issue, if I can just ask a couple of very basic, dumb sure. questions. Would the president elect, or even a candidate, talking to one of his advisors to reach out to the Russians, would that violate the Logan Act? No, it wouldn't. Uh, first of all, the Logan Act was passed in 1799. Nobody's ever been prosecuted under it. Why? Because the federal courts, especially uh, a, a New York U.S. federal court, said in 1964 it's unconstitutional. The act is. The act is, yes. It's overly broad, it's vague, it's ambiguous, and it likely violates the First Amendment freedom of speech. So we begin with that. So to answer your question directly, I don't think it violates the Logan Act. Look, if candidate Trump had somebody reach out to the Russians or any foreign government during a campaign, where's the crime? There's no statute that makes that against no, the law. No, we should at the time, President Obama was, you know, cracking down on the Russians, throwing a lot of emissaries out of this country over the, you know, charges that right. they had involved themselves in the election or were getting you know, um, very fast and loose with spying on us. Well, but but um, would it be unusual for a candidate, any candidate, uh, to, to, to be making overtures through their emissaries to other governments? No, look, um, candidates routinely, when they're running for president, try to burnish their foreign policy credentials by making overseas trips and meeting with foreign leaders. President Obama did it, for goodness sakes. Other presidential candidates have done it, especially those with little foreign policy experience. But given the backdrop of their involvement in the election, will this feed, you know, you know lawyers, and you know right. most of them are lawyers in, in the Senate and elsewhere and in Congress, they'll, they'll, they'll keep pushing this. Will they have a point to want to push it and to get to the bottom of this? Because I think in the original things they were throwing at General Flynn, Greg, he could be facing 60 years in jail, and now it's been whittled down to one charge of lying which could just be a matter of months. Yeah, I mean, look, we don't know enough yet about what Flynn intends to tell the special what counsel. What do you think? I, I honestly have no idea. My initial reaction was this is a plea deal to save his son, who has had some legal right. exposure. His son was his chief of staff. Um, and I think that was probably first and foremost on the general's mind when he pled guilty. You should never lie to the FBI. It's obviously wrong. Papadopoulos did it. He's young, and I just attribute it to him being naive and maybe stupid. General Flynn should certainly have known better. What he intends to tell, I do not know, but I, if I were a special counsel, the last thing I'd try to prosecute under would be the Logan Act. Uh, now, I have read portions of the plea deal, which talks about Flynn making contact with the Russians about a U.N. vote uh, right. during the transition. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. I wrote a column not long ago based on an interview I did with a law professor who wrote a book on transition teams. This is what transition teams do. They All reach right. out to foreign governments to tell them of their plans and to get a, a read on the foreign government's Assuming plans. Assuming that's what was going on here. Right. We don't know. We don't know. Thank you very, very much, uh, Greg Jarrett. Of course, uh, some of the uh, 